During our infectious disease course, we have an activity called the war card game. Um, this is part of unit three, when does the microbe become a pathogen? And during this lesson, students learn about specific uh, adaptations that microbes use to establish an infection in a host. Um, during the game, these students work in two sets of teams. Um, determine which one team will determine which pathogen is most effective at establishing infection uh, during a specific scenario, and the other team will uh, determine which host defenses are the most effective at eliminating a pathogen. So the pathogen team, is the, their goal is to make a person sit, sick, and the defense team's goal is to protect a person from a disease. There will also be a judge, and so this is a five-person game. The judge's job is really to keep track of so scoring as well as time. Each of these teams gets two sets of cards. Uh, the pathogen team gets a uh, stack of disease cards and wild cards, whereas the defense team gets a stack of defense cards and wild cards. Um, the wild cards represent these sort of external factors that can play a role in the defense, but they're not directly tied to the bacteria or the viruses, and they're not really directly tied to the immune system. Um, and the, sort of the best way to really show and to demonstrate this is to show an example of us working through one of these cases. So we're going to look at case two, in which Michelle eats at a new restaurant, and unfortunately her food is contaminated. And the way we're going to work through this is that Allison is going to take the defense team, um, and Liz is going to take the pathogen team. So in this first round, Liz is going to try to pick a pathogen that is going to cause the most damage uh, to the host during the scenario. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. There's a few options, um, but I'm going to go with salmonella, because uh, I know that is a foodborne pathogen. Great. Now Allison's going to try to pick a host defense that will protect against salmonella. All right, let's see. Well, I know salmonella is something you can get from food, so I'm going to choose saliva since I know it has antimicrobial properties. Right. So the next round of games, we're going to play these wild cards. And again, these are kind of, these are uh, factors that are external to the host and external to the pathogen. Um, so the first round of this is going to go through the pathogen team. All right, let's see. I've got a few options, infant, pregnant. Uh, let's go with malnutrition. Because, like, maybe Michelle was eating at a shady restaurant because she was really hungry. Okay. okay, and now the defense team is going to pick a wild card. All right, let's see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose antibiotics um, because I know that Antibiotics can fight bacteria and salmonella's bacteria. Right. So at the end of this and in this particular case, um, it's the judge's job to add up the scores of each of these cards. And so the, we provide a table, and these tables have points under specific contexts. So for example, we're going to look and see how many points that Liz gets for playing salmonella during case two. Since case two had to deal with a foodborne pathogen, salmonella gets nine points. Then we add up the defense teams. We try. We see that uh, Allison played saliva, and saliva gets eight points whenever you fight against typhoid fever. So she gets eight points. Then we look. We add up the wild cards. So for Liz, she played um, malnutrition, and for typhoid, it awards two points. And the defense team played antibiotics, and since salmonella is a bacteria, she gets three points. Whoever has a point in most points at the end of one of these cases wins. And in this particular example, they tie. Both of them have 11 points. And so you end with a controlled or persistent infection, which is an infection that doesn't necessarily get any worse, but it doesn't get better either without other interventions. Um, we have a lot of different cases that your students will work through. Most of them usually don't result in a tie, but it is an occasional thing. We want our students, this happens in the real world, we want the students to actually experience. Um, sometimes ties do happen. Sometimes you give antibiotics and the patients need more interventions um, before they can be healed. But most of the cases do result in either a pathogen winning um, or a defense team winning. 